Dear comrades and friends, in this beautiful autumn season with mellow fruits and flowers, I am pleased to be entrusted by the CPC Central Committee and the General Secretary Xi Jinping and take the best wishes of people of all ethnicities in China to come to the beautiful Yinchuan City in order to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region. Firstly, on behalf of the CPC Central Committee, the Standing Committee of the NPC, the State Council, the NPC Central Military Commission, I would love to extend our warmest congratulations to the Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region and also our greetings to the 6.8 million people here in Ningxia. Ningxia is a treasured land in western China. Over the past thousands of years, various ethnicities have been settling down and prospering here. They have been interacting and integrating to build the beautiful place beyond the Great Wall with abundance. They have created the splendid culture of inclusiveness. In 1958, with the guidance of the CPC Central Committee and the ethnic policies of the CPC, Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region was officially founded, signaling a new era of Ningxia with high autonomy and unprecedented solidarity. In the past six decades, Ningxia's economic growth has been leapfrogging. In 1958, the regional output was only up over 300 million RMB yuan, while last year that figure was over 340 billion RMB yuan, with an annual growth rate of 9.4 percent above national average. When we were firstly liberated, the Ningxia's industry was nothing but a white canvas with only one flower factory without any railways or a bridge over the hundreds of kilometers of Yellow River. By contrast, Ningxia, as of today, enjoys 34,000 kilometers of roads, 1,300 kilometers of railways, and 19 bridges over Yellow River. We have struck a balance between the three industries, with per capita green output ranking among the top nationwide. We also have seen complete sets of industries and accelerated development of modern service industry. We have seen the emergence of the Inchuan metropolitan area and the beautiful villages scattered all over the province. At the foot of Hulan Mountain and on the two banks of Yellow River, we are seeing a pleasant, fresh look here. Over the past six decades, Ningxia people has greatly improved their livelihood. In the early years of our founding, 80% of the local population were gripped by poverty. Particularly, Shiji, Haiyuan, and Guyan region was known for its poverty. But now, the per capita income in urban areas was approaching 30,000, while that of rural residents exceeded 10,000 RMB yuan. The admission ratio of all levels of education and a contribution ratio of medical and health care have overtaken the national average. The insurance of severe illnesses for urban and rural residents have realized full coverage. Internet plus education and Internet plus health care have been on the rise. Ethnic culture has been prospering as well, with clay sculpture, paper cutting, and other intangible cultural heritages showcasing their splendidness. 
Over the past six decades, Ningxia's ecological environment has showcased significant changes. In the past, we were blanketed with the sands, which blinded our way, and we could only find our way out by listening to the camel bell. But after years of continuous efforts, we have reversed the desertification trend in Ningxia. Forest coverage ratio was greatly improved from 1.5% in 1958 to 14%. The Ningxia section of Yellow River's mainstream have, for the first time, realized a water quality at Class II level for nine consecutive months in the past 22 years. This land area has seen a great reversal from showing yellow color to green color. And also, we are seeing pictures landscape in Liu Pan Mountain. That is a vivid mirror of the beautiful Ningxia now. Over the past six decades, Ningxia has enjoyed stable and harmonious social environment. The party's ethnic policy has been fully implemented. Han cannot be separated from minority ethnicities and vice versa. All sorts of minority ethnicities cannot be separated. Ethnic solidarity has become being sustained, and also the freedom of religion has been safeguarded with the Chinese characteristics. The mainstream has been echoed a lot in China, saying that only when we have a solid, a united country can have a home, and also we must uphold patriotism while believing in religion. Since the 18th National Congress, with the leadership of CPC Central Committee, the autonomous region has been making tremendous efforts and conquered a lot of difficulties to make new historic achievements of modernization and reform and opening up. We have uh, exhibited the largest uh, landscape changes in urban and rural areas and the highest quality development and the most tangible benefits delivered to people here. In 2016, General Secretary Xi Jinping paid visits to Ningxia, showcasing the high attention of the national government to the autonomous region. In the past five years, the central financial budget has been paying the transfer payment to Ningxia with an annual growth rate of 11 percent. The ratio and the level of the general transfer payment as well as ethnic-related transfer payment and ecological functional areas transfer payment have been above the national average level. Even though we are witnessing complicated situation in China and abroad, Ningxia's economy has maintained rapid growth momentum. The per capita output has exceeded 50,000 RMB yuan for the first time, with upgraded economic structure and 58 percent of urbanization. Service industry has exceeded industry to become the largest industry category. Wuzhong to Zhongwei Rail Transit, Inxi High Speed Railway, Zhonglan High Speed Railway, and Boeing High Speed Railway have been under construction. The era of high speed railway long aspired by Ningxia people will be around the corner. Also, we have made decisive achievements in poverty alleviation. For five years, we have reduced uh, about 720,000 people living below the poverty line. And also, the poverty incidence ratio has been lowered to 6% from the previous 22.9%. Three quarters of our poor people have uh, been gotten rid of poverty. And also 1.13 million people living in the mountainous areas have access to drinkable water. We have also eradicated the past history of people warming themselves around the furnaces. People have gained a higher sense of uh, happiness and uh, attainment. They are all marching toward the goal of building a moderately prosperous society in an all-round way. The past 60 years of remarkable achievements is the result of the leadership of CPC Central Committee and joint efforts of all leaders and people in Ningxia, and also the result of the support of the nation as a whole. For the people who have 
first-hand experience of the leapfrogging development of Nishahui Autonomous Region and all people from different circles of lives supportive of Nisha's reform and development are reasoned to be proud of it. Dear comrades and friends, now socialism with Chinese characteristics has entered a new era. The long-suffering Chinese nation has finally been emerging and enriching and strengthening itself. The modernization development in Ningxia is also standing at the new historical point. We must fully implement the socialism with Chinese characteristics and the spirits of the 19th National Congress to cement our four awarenesses, four confidences, listen to the call of the times, and play along with people's aspirations in order to realize prosperity, unity of ethnicity, beautiful environment, and people's wellness, so that Ningxia would build a moderately prosperous society with the other regions in China at the same time. We must remain committed to the party's leadership. CPC's leadership is the choice of history and people. It is where the interests and happiness of all ethnicities lie. Thanks to the leadership of the CPC, China could end the phenomena of about 500 million people being displaced, and thus we could enjoy prosperity and harmony. Thanks to the leadership of the CPC, Ningxia could abandon the past outright poverty and realize prosperity and development. Once we are committed to the CPC leadership, no one and no political forces could provoke the relationship of all ethnicities in China, and no difficulty and hardship could be an obstacle of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. We must uh, safeguard the core status of General Secretary Xi Jinping, the authority of CPC Central Committee, and its collective leadership. It Ideologically, politically, we must remain allied with the CPC Central Committee, just as in actions, to guarantee that all instructions and policies and strategies would be fully implemented, and also the CPC would always be the backbone of all ethnicities in China. We must also follow the paths of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Socialism with Chinese characteristics is the direction of modern China's development. It is also a necessary road for all ethnicities to be their own masters. Only when we follow down the paths of socialism with Chinese characteristics can we enrich develop and rejuvenate all ethnicities. Developing socialism with Chinese characteristics must be integrated into all major strategies, policies, arrangements, tasks, and all practices. We must maximize the wisdom of all ethnicities, unite all forces within our reach, and we must also give full play to the advantage of socialism that could make big things happen with collective forces. And we also must enjoy common prosperity by allowing some people to go rich first and then helping the others. We must allow all people to feel the warmth of socialism. Today's development achievements of Ningxia is indispensable from the tremendous support of the national government and all regions in China. In the future, we would only see an increase of such support. We must always safeguard national unity. China is a nation with multiple ethnicities, and national unity is the highest interest and common aspiration of all people. All of those ethnic autonomous regions are under the leadership of CPC and belong to the People's Republic of China, as well as the common people of all ethnicities, and various ethnicities must 
ally their own destiny with the destiny of the Chinese nation? Can we enjoy hope and potential? We must develop patriotism education and build a patriotic united front. We must stand against all separatist actions as well as those endeavors to separate China in the name of ethnicity, religion, or human rights. We must always protect equality of all ethnicities. Ethnic equality is the basis of our party's ethnic policy. It is also a basic principle in our constitution. No ethnicity is superior to the others and no ethnicity shall enjoy privilege over the others. The legal rights of any ethnicities must not be constrained and limited. We must legally protect equal rights of all ethnicities as well as their equal obligations to guarantee that we have comprehensive, genuine and thorough equality. The Han chauvinism must not be taken, and narrow nationalism must also be abandoned. We cannot regard the less developed ethnic regions as our burden, and also we cannot uh, uh, dispel our ethnic common people as outsiders. We must keep improving the system of regional autonomy. The system of regional autonomy is deep-rooted in China's history and tradition. It is consistent with the basic national condition of China as a united nation with multiple ethnicities. It is conducive to combining our national policies strategies with the real conditions of different autonomous regions. And also we must consider the people's love for their nation and for their own ethnicity. This is a pioneering effort of our party and all people in China. The system as a basic political system must remain unchanged. Instead, it must be further developed in practices. For the detailed policies, measures, and uh, efforts, they must keep pace with the times in order to combine unity and autonomy ethnic factors and regional factors so that the advantage of the system would be fully tapped. We must always guarantee united efforts and common prosperity of all ethnicities. Today's solidarity, stability and prosperity in Ningxia is co-created of all ethnicities. For Ningxia to create more extraordinary achievements tomorrow, it must rely on the common efforts of all ethnicities as well. We must take ethnic unity as the lifeline and keep building some efforts around ethnic solidarity so that all ethnicity must join hands together and come to each other's rescue. And also development must be regarded as the top priority of solving all problems. We must uh, make steady progress, implement new development concepts, and consider the changes of our major social conflicts in reform and opening up and pursuit of high quality development. We must build a moderately prosperous society in our round way, and to that end, the ethnic regions usually are the loopholes, and they are also our pain points and highlights. So we must be people-oriented to pursue interests for the people and answer their questions in order to fight the battle of poverty alleviation and allow reform and opening up to deliver more benefits to all ethnicities. We must guarantee that no person of minority ethnicities and no ethnic region would be left behind. We must always have the ideology 
and awareness of a community of the PRC. The awareness and sense of community of PRC is the intellectual bond for our ethnic solidarity and unity. It is the spiritual driver of the Chinese nation's development. So all leaders and people must build correct concept of nation, history, and ethnicity. We must increase our sense of identity to our great nation, the Chinese nation, the Chinese civilization, the CPC, and socialism with Chinese characteristics. Without such sense of identity, no system would be stable, and no governance method would be effective. Cultural identity is the deepest identity. For those efforts, equalizing Han culture with the Chinese civilization and contradicting the ethnic culture against the Chinese civilization are wrong efforts. We must avoid those trends. We must respect differences, be inclusive, and enhance interaction and communication of all ethnicities in order to build a society of common living, collective learning, living, working, and also different ethnicities are just like the pomegranate. We must also uphold the rule of law. Once we have laws executed, the nation would be well governed. If the laws are loosened, then our nation would be in a disorder. Only when we are faithful to the laws can all ethnicities work with accordance with the laws, and can we have ethnic solidarity. So all leaders must cement their legal awareness and come to realize that everyone is equal in front of laws and no one enjoys the privilege of going beyond the laws. You must also solve the problems according to their nature and avoid the sticking labels of ethnicity for those few criminals who have intentionally provoked and worsened our ethnic relationships. No matter what are their ethnic or religious backgrounds, we must crack down upon them so that the rule of law could safeguard ethnic solidarity. Dear comrades and friends, looking back, Ningxia has gone down extraordinary pathways. And looking into the future, Ningxia's reform and opening up and development will enjoy a brighter future. Let us work under the leadership of a CPC Central Committee with General Secretary Xi Jinping as its core and carry on the spirit of one who fails to reach the Great Wall is not a hero. Let's echo the call of President Xi Jinping, who said that uh, socialism must be done with real deeds, and let's work with one mind in order to contribute to building a beautiful Ningxia and realizing the great Chinese dream.